Hi, this is Shelley Kraft. We're coming to you live on SNN Live. We're at AdvaMed, the MedTech Conference 2012 in Boston. I have with me Mr. Larry Jasinski of Argo Medical Technologies, Inc., a private company. Larry, welcome to SNN Live. Well, thank you very much, Shelley. I uh, appreciate uh, you having me here today. Okay, so tell us about Argo Medical, and then we'll get into some stuff. Sure. In a, a simple way, uh, Argo Medical is developing a product that is made for a paraplegic pa person who can't walk. And a good way to describe it is we allow them to be able to walk, go up and down stairs, and have uh, independence once again from their paraplegia that they've uh, uh, encountered from their spinal cord injury. Explain your technology. The technology is an exoskeleton, and the exoskeleton relies on three major elements a motor which and gear assembly that is on the outside of the leg and on the calf and then it has a computer and a software system that controls it and one very important feature that's a key part of our patent technology is the tilt sensor or a sensor that basically picks up motion so to simplify it when one of our persons wants to walk they press a button on the wrist and it'll they'll tell them they want to stand sit walk and then as they begin to move in any manner, uh, the tilt sensor will pick it up, and then the software will tell the system what to do. And they could stand up from their chair, they can walk down the hallway, they can go get a drink. Uh, it works uh, in a way that allows them to regain the function of walking. Boy, I got a million questions. <laughs> oh my God. I hope I have a million answers. Okay, so where was this technology developed and who designed it? The technology was developed in Israel. It was a, a very unique story that is part of the reason it works as well as it does. Uh, an individual by the name of Dr. Amit Gopher was in an accident and injured in 1998. In the years after, he was looking for a way to develop a system that would allow someone in his state or someone who's uh, paraplegic to walk again. So the uh, technology was really made by someone who could understand it better than anybody else. And he had great technical skill and built a wonderful team to build this. All right, let me just get the website in the middle of the interview because what I do want, if someone's watching this, I'd like them to go to the website and find out more about it because uh, I'm sure many people would like to know more. So let's get the website out of the way. We'll come back and do it again later. Okay, it's www.argo, A-R-G-O, M-E-D-T-E-C dot com. So ladies and gentlemen, just so you know, we've seen a demonstration of this product at this conference. You want to explain that? Well, we brought a uh, one of the key users out there, and we've got about 60 now that are using it worldwide, and we hope that grows quickly now in the coming months, who is able to walk around the show just like anybody else at the show. Uh, we'll provide you some video, video clips and you can see them on the website as well and you can see how that person is using it in their everyday life. Now, let's get into reimbursement because I want to get a little technical because we're an investor oriented audience. Yeah. You know, let's get into reimbursement, let's get into cost, let's get into, you know, who pays for this. Well, we'll start with what the benefit is and that'll help define how and when they decide to pay for it. The health benefits of this device are real and significant as well as the mental benefits and I'll break those into two categories on the health side we change factors that are expensive risk for a patient and for an insurer uh, specifically looking at things like uh, bladder infection uh, the function and medications required with the bowel uh, and overall condition of the patient which affects long-term health outlook for them on the mental side, I, I don't have to quantify those in terms of what they do for reimbursement, but they really make a difference in this product for when someone can stand up and look you in the eye as opposed to uh, sitting Taking at regular out level. Of a wheelchair, please. Yeah, it's it's not hard. <laughs> now, from the more practical end, wh where does this go with reimbursement? And I, I think there are multiple layers. This is a product that was designed for people to use at home. So it's not a traditional device that you implant and it goes home and it goes through normal reimbursement channels. And I think that lends to two or three directions as to where reimbursement will develop with this product. First, there are a large number of people that would probably purchase it because the price point and the intent is that it is not dissimilar to what they pay for their better motorized wheelchairs or some of the prosthetic devices that are uh, insured out there. Uh, second, we have some groups that have indicated our likely willingness to reimburse. Now, until I have the U.S. approval, I can't show that. 
Uh, but for example, the VA, which has been one of the primary training centers for people that have come home from Afghanistan or Iraq or other injuries that have occurred in the military. That's a no-brainer right there. I, I think they may get it paid for, and they should. Uh, so you've got those layers. Third, roughly between 30 and 40 percent of most people that have spinal cord injuries, those injuries happened working. So you're dealing with a workman's comp approach in insurance as opposed to, again, some of the elements of Medicaid and Medicare. And then fourth and importantly is the private, normal private payers and what you deal with. So there are several elements in this that it is, it's not a binary, we've got to get to one point to get our clearance and approval. We will be able to build a business at some level uh, today and we are working very hard to build and develop more studies and more data to take this all the way through the process. What's your background? Uh, my background's varied. I spent about 16 years at Boston Scientific, which was couldn't have been a better formative place to understand what to do because they did a great job in product development in my cycle there. And I learned what we had to do for the regulatory pass, the reimbursement pass, and others. Uh, after I left Boston Scientific, I did two other startups, which uh, both were built uh, uh, to a good point. One uh, was profitable and sold. The other one, we got FDA approval and sold. Uh, and then that led me to this one. So you're a busy guy. <laughs> <laughs> I've enjoyed myself. I've been very fortunate to get attached to some very good technology. And I got a lot of good people to work with me at each of these enterprises I've had in my life. And uh, that's a lot of the reason for the success. So now, one other question that I have. So it's not standard. It has to be custom fit for the person, right? It is custom fit, but it isn't a difficult custom fit. For example, for you or for me, uh, you know, we're about the same height. But when you get the system uh, delivered for an individual, you have to set the size of the foot, you have to set the size of the pelvic band, and you have to adjust the legs. But those are mostly a matter of uh, adjusting some screws to make the leg the right length or the calf the right length. So it's about a one hour setup the first time they use it. After that, it takes them about 10 to 15 minutes to put it on every day. And what do they do? Take it off when they go to sleep, so to speak? Or do they use it in bed? Or do they sleep with it on? I, I know this. It may seem nebulous, but I'm just curious. Well, the design intent was for everyday use and all day use. So many people uh, were just at the beginning of commercialization for the personal unit that you take home. So I don't have a large base of experience. Uh, but the intent is, yes, they put it on in the morning, they use it for their daily life, whether it's working or at home, uh, and they take it off sometime later in the day at the end of the day. Where is it used now, and, and when do you think it'll have uh, FDA approval? Uh, well, the first half, it is now used in Europe. We have full CE mark and CE approval. We've just started selling the product uh, about three weeks ago. Wow. We've gotten our Congratulations. first Congratulations. Yeah, no, we are, we are thrilled. We're, we're excited on what we've had. In the United States, it is, uh, we believe, a 510K with clinicals in our discussions with the agency. We've completed our clinicals. We've completed all the testing that we believe is necessary. And our submission is about to go in. So I, I can't predict when we will be uh, get FDA clearance, but my expectation is it's next year that we'll, we'll be able to provide this to the U.S. individuals who want to use it. Website, one more time. www.argomedtech.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're at AdvaMed, the MedTech Conference 2012 here in Boston. Larry Jasinski, Argo Medical Technologies, Inc., a private company. I want to thank you so much for coming on to SNN Live. Any questions, go to the website, contact Larry. He's got a staff. He's here to help people. Ladies and gentlemen, thanking Larry for coming on to SNN Live. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate the uh, support. Good to have you.